Hi, my name's Miss Pam. Today we are going to do a little segment on reading skills. We're going to watch a little movie. We're going to take a little quiz. We're going to go over vocabulary words and we're going to have a little writing assignment. So let's get started with the movie. I think I just read the same sentence 10 times in a row, and I still couldn't tell you what it was about. Maybe it is time for a break. What? Sorry. What I was going to say is, there's no point in reading if you're not taking in what you read. Before you even sit down to read a book or article or textbook chapter, there's some prep work you can do to improve your reading and comprehension. Preview the text so you know what you're reading. Okay, this chapter of my social studies book is about the Harlem Renaissance. Hmm, I don't really know anything about that. I mean, I've heard of it. I know that Harlem is a part of New York City. Well, I'm going to learn about it right now. You can skim or quickly look over what you're reading to get an overall impression. Pay attention to section headings and words in bold. Let's see, writers of the Harlem Renaissance, Langston Hughes. Hey, I've read some of his writing. Take notes while you read. Use note cards or a notebook to write down important ideas. Uh, hang on a sec. Take your time. Stop and reread anything that you don't understand. And jot down any words that you don't know. There's one, ragtime. That way you can look it up later. If you can put what you're reading into your own words, you'll know you can understand it. So, the Harlem Renaissance was a time that celebrated African-American heritage and culture. And, obviously, it took place in New York City, in Harlem. If you have time, it's a great idea to reread your assignment. You may have missed something the first time through. You can also go back over your notes to refresh your memory. I'm reading a textbook, but you can apply these reading skills to anything you read. Oh yeah, Moby and I like to make a movie in our heads. If you can visualize what you're reading, you know you're getting it. This helps a lot when you're reading a novel, like a book report book, where you have to keep track of a story and characters. When you're done with a reading assignment, there's nothing wrong with talking to friends, parents, or teachers about what you've read. Talking about a text helps you better understand it and form ideas of your own. You might carry these ideas over into a paper or presentation. Oh, and you can look up those new vocabulary words. Okay, Moby, ragtime is a type of jazz music that has a syncopated rhythm. Moby? Well, I'm going to get back to reading this. I don't think I mentioned this, but it's a good idea to find a quiet place to read your book. I'm going to the library. All right. That was our movie. Let's take a little quiz about what we just learned. First question. Oh, by the way, can you please get out pencil and paper and write down the answers? Put your name at the top and the date, and then your answers for the 10 question quiz. And then I'll have you write down vocabulary words. And then we'll do a short writing example all on the same paper. Okay. So, and if I move too fast on anything, feel free to. Pause the video. First question, what information should you gather when you preview a text? And when they say a text, they don't mean a text message on your phone. A text is just a, a group of written words, like in a book, or you could have text from song lyrics, or it's just, the words that are written is the text. So we're talking about the words in the article that he was reading. 
Okay, so what information should you gather when you preview a text? Is it A, the names of every character in the work? Is it B, general idea of what the text is about? Is it C, information about where, when, and how the book was published? Or is it D, details about the life of the author? So if you're just skimming, previewing the text, then you don't really know the names of every character. So that one's out. You don't really get into the life of the author. So that one's out. Information about where, when, and how the book was published? No, because you're just skimming the main text. So the answer B is correct. A general idea of what the text is about. Okay, you need to put these three things in sequence. A, taking notes. B, previewing or skimming the work. And C, discussing with a friend. What order would you do those in? So I believe you would first preview the text, which is B. So that means it's one of these two. Then you would take notes while you're reading it. So that's A. And then you would discuss it with a friend. So I believe D is correct. When's the best time to stop and reread a piece of text? Is it A, when you come across something you don't understand? Is it B, when you're halfway through the text? Or is it C, after you've already read it several times? Or D, when you've finished with the entire text? The text could be an article, a book, anything. A magazine, piece. Anyway, the answer would be A. When you come across something you don't understand, reread it. Question four. What's the most likely effect of watching TV while you're reading? Is it A, you'll be able to concentrate more easily? Is it B, you'll gain a better grasp of the material? while the TV is going on? Is it C, you'll overlook important details of what you're reading? Or is it D, you'll get a better grade on your next book report? Most likely, it's C, because when the TV's on, it's a distraction, and you miss part of what you're reading because you're concentrating partly on the TV. Question five, why would you use a dictionary when you're reading a novel for your English class? Would it be for A, to look up information about the novel's author? B, to find a list of synonyms for a word in the novel? Would it be C, to look up historical information about the novel? Or would it be D, to look up the definition of a word in the novel? Well, I think you would look other places than a dictionary for these three. I think you would look in a dictionary to look up the definition of a word. So, D. Question six. What is the main purpose of note-taking? A, it allows you to memorize the text word for word. B, it allows you to write your report while you read your book. C, it allows you to recognize and review key ideas. Or D, it proves to your teacher that you've done your reading. Well, A, isn't correct because when you take notes, you make them short and you don't, you summarize and you don't write down word for word usually. B, it might help you to write a report looking at your notes, but not while you're reading the book. 
First you take the notes, then you can use your notes to write a report. And I don't think it's gonna prove to your teacher that you've done your reading. That's not good enough evidence. So C, it allows you to recognize. Seven, in the phrase, it's usually a good idea to read a text comprehensively. What is the best synonym for comprehensively? Remember, a synonym is a word that's similar, kind of means the same thing. Is it A, repeatedly, B, inadequately, C, quickly, or D, thoroughly? Answer is thoroughly. Eight, what's the main purpose of talking to someone else about what you've read? Is it A, making sure you've memorized the text properly? B, allowing yourself to come up with new ideas? C, making sure you know how to pronounce the author's name and the names of the characters? Or D, making sure that you've used complete sentences in your notes? Well, we don't have to use complete sentences in our notes, so that one's out. Um, and it might help to know if you pronounce the author's name and the names of the characters correctly, because when you're discussing it with someone else, they might say, oh, well, I say that person's name differently. That's okay. Um, and making sure you've memorized the text properly is not correct because you're not memorizing, you're summarizing. So B, it allows yourself to come up with new ideas. Question nine, if you can't talk to someone about what you've just read, what's another way to produce a conversation's desired effect? Write in your journal about what you did that, that day, or B, ask your teacher for an extension on your report, or C, go and read another piece by the same author, or D, write a blog post about your opinion of the text. Well, if you write in your journal, that's just for you. No one else probably will be reading your journal, so that doesn't help because you're trying to get a desired conversation effect. Asking your teacher for an extension on your report won't really help you unless you plan to have a big discussion with somebody later, I don't know. And see, go and read another piece by the same author. Well, that's not a good idea until you understand and have talked through the book or the piece that you're working with. So D, you can write a blog and post about your opinion of the text. And on a blog, other people can comment, so they can, in essence, have a conversation with you. So we'll say D. And the last question. Skimming a text is most similar to eating a large dinner, having a light snack, cooking a large dinner, or looking up a recipe. Well, when you skim, you just take small pieces and you go over quickly. So I don't think that's eating a large dinner. I don't think it's cooking a large dinner. And I don't think it's like looking up a recipe. It's like having a light snack because you're just getting a little bit. All right, we passed. Good job, you got them all right. Okay, next we are going to move on to um, vocabulary list. I want you to write these down. Feel free to pause the video about now and take as long as you need to write down the vocabulary words 
and their definitions. I'll go over them real quick and then I'll pause for a little bit, but if you need to stop the video to get them all written down, that's fine. First word is comprehension. That is the act or process of understanding. Next word is skim, to pass over lightly. Visualize, to recall from mental images or pictures, like he talked about making a movie in his head. Preview, to view or show be beforehand or in advance. And refresh, to provide new vigor and energy by rest and food. And the last vocabulary word is vocabulary. The stock of words used by or known to a particular group, people or group. So these words that they have picked for our vocabulary are known in the reading skills movie to help you comprehend it. So go ahead and take a minute or however long you need to write those down on your paper. Okay, pause if you need to, but <clears throat> we're gonna move on to the writing assignment. We've already played the movie, done the quiz, reviewed the vocabulary words, and so now the assignment, you're gonna write a main idea sentence, sentence and three sentences with supporting details, summarizing. Did you know using three vocabulary words? So, and you're gonna turn in that paper for credit. So, you're going to write the main idea with three supporting sentences and you need to use three vocabulary words. <clears throat> So as you're writing, I want you to I want you to remember these things. I want you to remember to use proper conventions when you're writing assignments. So capitalizing the first word and proper nouns or names. And don't forget your ending punctuation, periods, question marks, exclamation points. So write your topic sentence and then identify your point or your opinion and then three sentences supporting it. And then a conclusion sentence. So this will be a paragraph of five sentences total. If you need to write a draft, review it, make sure it says what you mean and include conventions and five sentences using three of the vocabulary words. Three, a topic, three supporting sentences, and a conclusion. And then edit it if you need to, and then rewrite it so you have a nice piece of text yourself. The main idea. So you want to write down the most important thought or idea within something we just watched a movie of, and which tells um, the reading, the most important point, tells the reader the most important point that's in that text. So an example of that is there are a great amount of deer around here. This whole area is great country for hunters and fishermen. There are bears, mountain lions, and coyotes. To the east, are streams full of trout and there are ducks and geese. So they underline the main idea of that is the whole area is great country for hunters and fishermen. That's the main idea. So in yours, you want to make sure you have a sentence that states the main idea. 
And then the supporting sentences support that main idea. An example of supporting sentences is, it is important to wear sunscreen during hot summer days. Wearing sunscreen provides protection from ultraviolet rays and decreases your chance of getting skin cancer. Dermatologists, doctors of the skin, stress that people should not avoid sunscreen just because they have a deep tan or because the weather is overcast. So they underline supporting sentences for that. So the main idea of that is it's important to wear sunscreen and the two sentences or parts of sentences they under, underlined support that idea. Okay. So write that um, paragraph. And so your paper should have the answers to the quiz, the vocabulary words, and the paragraph and possibly um, first a uh, rough draft. But by the end, I want the final paragraph to be a nice, neat, clean version. So there you have it. Um, if you need to go back or pause any of these, this video, help, help yourself. We have come to the end of this lesson. I hope you learned something. I know I did. And I wish you a beautiful day. Thank you for listening.